Welcome to the Savvy Property Investors Podcast, a weekly show that delivers the best hard-hitting property industry news, business advice, and talks that will get you ascending in the real estate industry. Now, here's your host, the amazing award-winning property and business coach, best-selling author, and serial entrepreneur, Miss Sapphire Gray. Hello, Savvy ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the Savvy Property Investors Show. This is a show for newbies and seasoned property investors, coaches, consultants, and trainers who want to become more savvy investors and build a legacy for their loved ones. My name is Sophia Gray, and I am your host. Every week, we bring you different episodes talking about property investment and various business topics on how to grow as an expert in business. Sometimes we interview clients so you can learn from them and also bring in expert speakers from property or the business world. Today, we're going to be talking about energizing hacks to unleash your mind and brain potential in the 21st century. But before I introduce our guests, I want to remind you about a couple of things. If you're new to our podcast, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any other episodes. And then if you haven't downloaded the uh, Property Investors Toolkit, make sure you do that now. You know that following in the footsteps of someone that has already created wealth through property and business is the way to learn. So, and this is how you can do it for yourself. Maybe you're struggling to know what property strategies to deal with or finding the below market value properties. Whatever your issue is, there's something you can do about it right now. And that's why I created the Property Investors Toolkit. It will help you to build a profitable property business that will continue continuously bring you rewards you desire. Check it out on our website now, www.savvywomen.co.uk. It's only £37. That website again is www.savvywomen.co.uk. And if you scroll down in our show notes, you'd also find a link there. And any of our social media, look in the comments. I look forward to you joining this uh, property toolkit where you're going to really learn a lot about investing in property. So it's now time for me to introduce our guest today, Rena Lang. Her topic is really going to be mind blowing, as it said here in her title. Most people are not satisfied with their minds. Most people believe that their minds work against them rather than for them. There was a time they had dreams, but most fell flat due to lack of energy or time, clarity or even focus, persistence, among other things. Many felt entrapped in their minds, feeling like they can only live a fraction of the life they know. They could have if only their minds were free on and on fire. So join this podcast today where we talk, we are talking to Rena Lang. So let's talk about a little bit about, about our guests. Rena is an explorer of the mental states in increased memory, focus, clarity, intellect, and intuition. She is the creator of Mind and Brain Supercharge program, designed specifically to help leaders, business owners, and intellectual thinkers easily upgrade their minds and brains to cope with the 21st century demands and challenges. Rena struggles for years with a bad case of brain fog, mental fatigue, procrastination, and short-term memory. But after such trials and errors, she cracked the code to unleash her intellectual abilities. Today, Rena is passionate about educating others about consciousness states, the brain's energetic makeup, and how our uh, innate intuitive, creative and intellectual superpowers can be assessed and upgraded. Rena's mission is very simple, but very powerful. Clear mind, healthy brain, think energy. Or be energized. My name is Sophia Gray, your host. Let's get started. Thank you very much for joining me today, Um, Rena. How are you doing? Doing great. Thank you so much for the introduction. So (laughs) please be here and share this message also with your community. So thank you for inviting me. 
you're so welcome and lovely to to read out what you've overcome and been able to then pass on to others it's absolutely brilliant but everyone would say that there's myths around the brain and the mind so what are the myths you would like to debunk about our brain and mind as we age so first myth that i would like to debunk is just this whole belief that as we are you know when we're children teenage years this is where our intelligence grows mm -hmm. and then sometimes in the 20s 30s it kind of like plateaus mm -hmm. and then when we turn 40 50 somewhere around that time we uh, our mind be begins to deteriorate and this is just the normal way of doing things mm -hmm. and so most of us we kind of like take it for granted yeah this is going to happen to us unless we won the lo gold not lottery and genetically somehow we we're going to get spared all of that mm -hmm. so this is a myth that i would like to debunk because in my case my mind began deteriorating when i was just in my early 30s and i believe one of the side effects of why this this happened to me in the first place is because i'm such an achiever a lot of women, they have this inferiority complex. That's why we are studying better than, than boys at school, right? Uh, women, women are much better at school. But that's because we are such a people pleasers. We try to get that stamp of approval and we try to be the best, but actually it doesn't translate and actually real life success once we turn, uh, uh, when we, once we go into careers, right? And we still feel like we need to catch up and we always feel like oh, there is this inferiority complex when it comes to our minds, right? And so I was pushing myself so hard and burned myself out several times. Mm. And I fried my brain in the process. And then when I finally landed my dream job, I was just in my early 30s, was making the money I wanted. Then I started realizing, okay, something is happening with my mind. I would go into client meetings and I would not remember what was discussed in those meetings. I actually had to go and record conversations on my phone and then listen to it afterward. So, because I, I had a blank slate. I just didn't know what was discussed anymore. I was forgetting everything. I lacked energy. Um, I needed one hour of drinking coffee before I was even ready to open my very first email. Mm -hmm. And so I realized, okay, something's got to change because I was not going to wait until I'm 50, you know, when the normal process of the mind breaking down is going to happen to me much mm -hmm. sooner. And since then, I embarked on this journey of actually educating myself much more about the mind and the brain and the mind and brain health as well and how things can be turned around because uh, if, when you look at the statistics you know um, over people over 80 50 percent of them have some sort of a mental disorder but also um, the mental disorder begins in the brain 30 years before it manifests so if you think you're going to wait until you're 50 and then you're going to take care of your brain think mm. again True. Think, the sooner you start the better so what do you say is some of the key insights to gain when it comes to mental um, deterioration then? So first off, uh, our brain is the most stressed organ of our body. Mm. When we go to the gym, we exercise our body, the muscle is sore. What do we do? We let it rest for a few days and then it, it goes back to normal. The brain never gets to rest. It's the most stressed organ of the body because mm -hmm. we keep bombarding it with stress where we're using it 24 seven. That's why. We have a pandemic of lack of sleep. Insomnia is a big issue. Right. And um, because the brain never gets to rest and you're mm -hmm. trying to still um, work with it at the normal pace, things just start slowing down because after a while, the brain is just like, I I'm too tired to do this these things. That's why mind fatigue, brain fog is a big, big thing that a lot of people are experiencing. And now more of us, we're spending more time in front of the computers during COVID times and such. We're consuming information all the time, but none of it sticks. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we just don't have this ability after a certain age um, of actually relaxing our brain fully so that we get that rejuvenating rest and sleep. Most of us, and this is certainly that was something that was happening to me, I would go to, to bed my mind would be racing until my body finally passes out. And then I wake up in the morning just as tired as I was before. If this resonates, if this is something that you're experiencing, it just means your brain is not getting enough rest, which means yeah. something else needs to happen, such as I started experimenting with certain frequencies. Mm. Of course, meditation was a big part of it, and meditation certainly helps. But the internet is full of all kinds of frequencies. Choose the, the one that you like the best. Uh, there are certain there are certain frequencies that I recommend a lot to my clients and in my coaching programs. Um, but if you just Google, there are certain frequencies. Play around with them, listen to them, and see which frequencies actually help you rest your mind. 
some of our clients may not or listeners may not and viewers may not understand what do you mean by frequencies frequencies are certain sounds mm -hmm. certain sounds and uh that are meant to relax the brain okay they produce certain impulses in the brain and that they help relax the brain relax the organ that mm -hmm. is the brain because the brain and that's the difference between the brain and the mind the mind is an energy that surrounds mm -hmm. us the aura whatever it's it's an energy which are the thoughts emotions and such everything that surrounds us the brain is just an organ that is an incredible organ better than any computer on this planet that is able to read that energy and and transform it into words into experiences feelings it's just that as we get older we're like sponges i think mm -hmm. by now everybody's familiar with the concept of energy we we there are some people that give us bad vibes there are certain people that give us good vibes and we feel good around them there are other people we feel just really unwell around them there are places that just suck out our energies we feel drained after when we go back uh come back from work we we feel like we need a shower to kind of like wash off that energy i think mm -hmm. everyone is very familiar but what we also are we are like sponges we absorb all that energy many people believe that more becoming more intelligent means knowing more more facts more information just that's, that's why we're so addicted we're such junkies mm -hmm. when it comes to information we just keep absorbing 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 mm -hmm. but actually if you because i spent you know after i had my issue i actually took one year off and i traveled all over the world i went to india i was meditating i did my yoga training i went to a buddhist uh, temples and meditate there for uh, for a month learning about buddhism and such actually i would say buddhists are the the experts when it comes to mind because they've been studying it for 2500 years mm -hmm. and when you listen to them their solution to actually becoming more intelligence it's cleaning up decluttering mm -hmm. it's not having more but actually having less because a lot of the information is useless it does not, it does not serve any purpose to you right now but because that energy is floating in your energy tank, your brain is busy fighting, fighting, fi fighting fires and busy being mm -hmm. stretched very, very thin. That energy, I don't want you to start thinking that that energy is your enemy. You need to start fighting against it. And, you know, no, it's not your enemy. That energy is there because somehow it tries to tell you some, something that is important to you. Most mm. of the energy is somebody transpass your boundaries, something that was done that wasn't right, because most of it is negative, right? It's right. worry and stress, money, this and that, too many things to do. It's all that energy is fighting for your attention to tell you their story for how they are trying to prevent you from being hurt, to save you from whatever it is. They're, they're not your enemies. But if you never, most of us, that's how I lived my life. I was mm. afraid of staying with my mind even for five minutes. I was reading, I was watching, I was talking, I was constantly busy, 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 because I was afraid of all the skeletons in my closets, so to say. Mm -hmm. But then actually when I stopped and sat down and started looking at those skeletons, I realized there are just tiny little mice <laughs> running around my my my, okay. my energy field, not, mm -hmm. not scary at all. And usually just by looking at that energy for five minutes, it can be transformed in, into something else. Right? That's basically he's just saying that sometimes people can be draining on your 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 basically your energy and it's just it's negative people negative thoughts but you carry them more than somebody another individual and when you are in that position of carrying it more the load more than another individual is to try and get rid of that try to take that away from your space because once somebody's in your space like that it is it does become draining then affects your sleep as well and your patterns of behavior throughout the day so it's always looking at people that surround you, you surround yourself with. Yes, there's always good and bad vibes with, with everything that we do, but it's recognizing it within yourself as well. You touched on intelligence. Um, so I want to ask you, intelligence encompasses instinct, intellect, and intuition. Could you explain the difference and why does this matter? Yes, of course. So most of us, when we talk about intelligence, we think about intellect that we learn knowledge, experiences, facts, and such. And this is where, for most of us, memory is breaking down at a certain point, right? And once the memory is breaking down, people freak out. But basically, let's start with instinct. Mm. Animals have instincts. They do things instinctually. Same with humans. For a long, long time, when we were still evolving, there was very little mind in, in, uh, in our brains, let's say, very little intellectual capacity, ability. People were, humans were just 
instinctual homo sapiens, right? When they first developed, they were just instinctual. They were surviving, they were procreating, eating food. There was not much intellectual activity happening. So instincts is actually, if you, if you understand like the chakras and if you are familiar with the chakras, it's actually a function of the navel chakra, the abdominal area navel chakra. And a lot of people, they make a lot of money on this type of intelligence. Sportsmen, martial artists, they rely on that ability to react very, very fast. And it's the intelligence of the body more than anything. Mm -hmm. Many people, when they talk about gut instincts and such, they just feel it in their gut that this is the right thing to do or that's the right thing to do. But it's not intuition. It's mm -hmm. different. It's, it's an ability of your navel chakra to perceive and, and react in a certain way. That's why we are able to catch the mark before it falls on the ground without our brain actually catching up on it. Mm -hmm. We just do it automatically. That's one type of intelligence. A lot of people make a lot of money on that. The other type of intelligence, which is the intellect, the facts and all that, yeah, a lot of men are stuck in that kind of like thinking space. It's actually something that is created in the Ajna chakra, the, the chakra between the eyes and the throat chakra. This is the ability of actually seeing and planning and breaking down. And it's very detailed oriented, fact oriented and such. Mm -hmm. But because we are using these chakras all the time, consuming information, watching Netflix, reading, and they get very, very clogged and congested. And the chakras usually a normal function, function of the chakra. It actually goes clockwise, counterclockwise all the time, all the time. It's rotating, it's absorbing energy, expelling energy. But the more we are looking at different things, that energy just stays in our energy system and it stays within the chakras. So after a while, the chakras are no longer able to work properly. They slow down in time. That is why it's become so much harder for us to remember also things because we have our minds are like a room filled with a million clothes and it's a mess. Yeah. None of it is organized. Mm -hmm. None of it is organized. So for you to find the shortcut, to find that information, because all of that information is there. Our entire lives, they're still in our energy field. It's just that we are not able to access. Certain people have their minds better organized than others. That's why they're able to remember every single day of their lives. Mm -hmm. All of us have that ability, but it starts all with cleaning up our minds, cleaning up all that mess. The more we have, sometimes it's, it's not a good thing. So one tip I have for, for those listeners who are interested in actually cleaning up their minds is start journaling. Mm. This is the best tool that I've learned, and I learned it from a book called um, The Artist's Way. It's called Morning Pages there. But basically the idea is that every single day you sit down and start writing whatever is in your mind. I've been doing it for almost two years. The first six months, six months I was just literally just ranting about the moon and the sky and the okay. sun to round, the, the, the sky is to blue type of thing. It was just me ranting, ranting, ranting. Because, but all of that is energy that is inside of me and giving it that place and space and voice to tell me its story. Okay, I'm angry because somebody cut me, but am I truly angry because somebody cut me on the road? No, mm -hmm. maybe I'm angry because of something else that actually you start getting to the bottom of the things because all that emotion is trying to just tell you stop and listen. Something is not right in your world. But writing it out, you be basically at picking up the clothes that are on your floor. You're looking at it. Is this something that's worth keeping folding and putting on a shelf? Mm -hmm. Or is this something worth throwing away? And you just start doing and doing and doing. And now, two years down the road, what I realized is that it organized my mind. My mind is empty and clear. I've never had such an organized and empty and clear mind in my whole life. Mm. Nothing fighting right now for my attention i can fully focus on this conversation with you there's yeah. nothing to do i have a huge list to do list i have my business to run but right now this is all that matters i don't sure. have a broken mind right now fighting for it yeah but that actually an organized living space organized desk is a reflection of the mind i was watching the other day a documentary about people who have incredible memories photographic memories and such one Thing about them is that yes there is a certain part of the brain that is more enlarged than an average person but another thing is their house that houses their homes everything is not ocds not ocd but it's well organized everything is on its rightful place and so is their mind everything mm -hmm. is on its rightful 
place nothing. Well, there's always a thing where people say there's organized chaos as well, because not everybody works in an organized space. They don't like things linear. And some people like to work with things around them, then able to work and then put it away, as opposed to having everything put away and then work trying to work around, around everything being put away. Organized chaos is, is one way. And the, what you touched on as well is regards to journaling. I always believe in writing things down, brain dumping, I call it. So taking things out from your mind, putting it in, in writing, because you can then work back a timeline as to when something actually disturbed what's going on with you now. Because when you work a timeline, you think, oh, that happened. That's why I'm behaving this way I am. Or that's why my mind is not rested. So always putting things down on paper is always a good way to really organise yourself and look at things to distress yourself as well. Our brains is, is the most stressed part of our body. And why would you say that is and what can we do about it? So maybe just let me go back because I haven't finished the three things. The, okay. The things okay, go ahead. But I just want to touch kind of like on the organized cows. The thing is this, yes, energy is cows. Everything is always changing and, and we, we have to have that flexible mind. It's mm -hmm. hard when your mind is very rigid and becomes it becomes after a while living in an organized cows becomes very stressful for a lot of people. Actually, in fact, the more you clean up your mind, the emptier your mind, the easier it is to cope because you just see not or disorganized cows, you actually see patterns. Mm. So then look through that and in an empty mind, that's when the really ideas come and come through and that's where intuition comes comes in. Intuition, see it like that inner voice, that other part of your super consciousness, higher consciousness, whatever it is, divine voice, whatever people want to call it, the universe speaking to them, whatever it is. It's always there. That voice is always there. It's just that when you, if your mind is like a room filled with 100 people shouting at you all the time, mm -hmm. the chances of you actually hearing that voice are very limited. Even if you hear that voice, what are the chances of you understanding it correctly? Don't go there. There, you're gonna, there is going to be an accident or something like that. You, we are being warned all the time. We, it's that part of us that can see in, far into the future and come back and warn us about whatever things that might be happening to us. But if 100 people are shouting at you all the time, it's very, very hard to perceive that voice, understand it correctly, act on it correctly, mm -hmm. implement it in your life. That's why most people, they get their best ideas when they're actually showering, when they're, some part of their mind is busy mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. something physically. But also when we wake up, in that space where we are actually transitioning between the conscious mind and the uh, altered state, which is when we sleep, that's when a lot of ideas can happen because the mind, the monkey mind, has not come, come fully online yet. That is why I highly advise one of the best ways to develop, develop intuition is creativity. Mm. Most of us, when we get up, what do we do? Is imme immediately starting with our chores, you know, getting food down, all the all the things that driving to work, all the things that actually we don't like doing. That's why when we wake up, we're already tired. We don't get up energized, feeling like, thank God it's morning, right? We wake up and it's already chores. It's already I must and this and that. That's why I highly advise carve out your mornings and protect them as if the best thing there is. You are a saving property investors. I'm sure you are familiar with the concept of paying yourself first when it comes to money. When it comes to time and energy, this is the most valuable resource you have. Pay yourself too in the morning first. Mm. Don't start doing jobs and whatever, your full-time jobs, whatever, spending all your best energy on the, on the things that actually are not for yourself. I highly advise, think back, what are the things that you enjoyed? Maybe it's writing a little children's book, painting, whatever it is, set an alarm, carve out that one hour, get up one hour earlier and just pamper yourself. Do what you love the most, the best and do something. I that agree with that. Yeah. When you wake up, you will be like, yes, this is what I get to do now. Mm -hmm. And that energy, when you get, get up with that energy, it's going to be there with you for the rest of the day. If I can fit in one hour of my children's book writing, that's what I mean in the morning. If I can fit it in into my morning or a beautiful meditation, whatever it is, then throughout my day, ideas are flowing for my yeah. business because I'm already tapped into that creative energy, that intuitive energy. And when I'm working on my business, the ideas just keep flowing. 
Love that. Highly advise you do that. And this is intuition is the third type of intelligence, and it's far superior than anything else because it's just pure knowing. And I think every one of us had that hit at some point of their life, maybe just once in their life. But there was just this idea. We don't know where it came from. It was just there in the morning. And we just knew that's the thing we got to do. And usually it turns out into something really incredible, like go to that country or travel or invest into that stock market, whatever it is, or write that book. All of us yeah. have that experience. Well, they say a woman's got the best intuition. I don't know how true that is, but the woman's intuition is always near on point. And, and when you follow your intuition, you're often doing something that you really, your body's telling you, your mind's telling you to do. So, yeah. I believe in intuition. Well, about intuition, basically, when when we are working, what I mentioned already about the chakras, concrete mind is Ajna and throat. Intuition is actually forehead and crown. Mm -hmm. It's the upper, upper chakras that open up. That's why it's kind of like balancing, navigating this conscious mind and, and um, altered state. It's kind of going back and forth. A lot of it, I think it has much to do with us actually embracing our emotions. There are many women, men as well, that are incredibly intuitive, but they're usually also very, very um, inclusive when it comes to their emotions. They actually work through their emotions and they don't mind crying and they don't mind expressing their love. They're usually, actually, when it comes to intuition, if you really want to develop your intuition, it has much to do with the development of the heart. Mm. Wisdom of the heart. We all have heard of that. You know, our heart chakra is... The more you open up your heart, the more you're loving, the heart starts producing certain energies. Your brain starts being energized with those certain energies. And the brain is able to actually read that intuitive energy, read that information. All of us are intuitive. It's the issue of the brain. Is the brain actually able to read that information and translate it into something that, that can be read and picked up by our conscious mind? So Excellent. that's... Those are kind of like mechanics. Of course, follow me on YouTube. I talk a lot about uh, about that on my on my YouTube channel. If if this is kind of like a new concept, you've never heard of this before, but you would like to educate yourself more, just follow me on YouTube. I talk a lot about this this type of things. Excellent. And going back to the question I was asking you before before you completed the the, the last one, our brains is the most stressed part of our body. So why is that, and what can we do about it? So that's what I mentioned before. Our brain basically never gets to rest. And then another thing is that many people are not aware of this, but in time, energies crystallize. Just like everything, energies vibrate and they crystallize around our brain. That's why when I had my issues, you know, I had I felt like my head was stuck in a fishbowl. That's why I couldn't remember anything. I was my mind was foggy, um, and my brain was foggy and fatigued. I was feeling, because that's one of my superpowers, ever since I began meditating, I started feeling just perceiving energies. It felt like something hard was around my brain, like a, like a, like a helm around my brain. Later on, I learned that energies crystallize. It's because, that's why the world doesn't change because people change. The world changes because people die. Small children, their energy is so flexible, so fluidic. They're constantly... They're able to absorb different opinions, different points of views. The mm -hmm. world is crazy, but they still are able to make sense of it. And to them, they're not opinionated about it. They just take mm -hmm. it, okay, the world is the way it is, and that's it. And that's why, what, why Buddhism a lot advocates that going back to the child's mind. Going back to the child's mind means going back to child's energies. Mm -hmm. As we get older, our opinions get crystallized, and we are unable to see other people's points of view. That's why the world is so polarized and we're getting more and more polarized and people are completely unable to see the other point, point of view. They're so stuck in their own opinion. Mm -hmm. That's why as we get older, it's almost painful for people to change their opinions. But most of those opinions, they actually form in the first seven or, or 17 years of their lives. Excellent. Jeez, 70 years later, wow. none of those opinions are serving us anymore. But they, this energy is still around the brain and it's pressing yeah. down on the brain. That's why it's almost like the older we get, it's almost okay. No point in talking to you. We'll, we will never, you will never get on the, on the same page. Whereas young people, they're still very flexible. They can, they can see that the truth is not right or wrong. It's a yeah. diamond, and there are many, many parts of it. You can be right. I can be right. Let's yeah, agree to exactly. agree. But you're actually right, and I'm right. And I see all points of views, and I'm able to reconcile it. Brilliant. 
So join us after the break with more insights from Rina. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button below. Our podcast is only made possible by great listeners like you. And welcome back. Thank you so much for the first half. It's been very enlightening. We talked about what is um, intuition, intellect, our instincts even. And we debunked the the brain and, and the mind. And you gave us some um, myths that were, were true and not true. Because a lot of people have a different belief in different things. But you talked about how our brains work and journaling to help us with a lot of things that we're doing and how to use that as part of our process of clearing our mind when we go to, to sleep. So what are some of the ways to unleash greater minds and brains potential? So just what I was saying, so when we, the brain is the most stressed organ of the body, just by relaxing your brain, maybe using frequencies and such, essential oils, just taking the time, taking breaks, 10 minutes breaks between, just ha- giving your, your brain the time to just reset, that's one step. A relaxed mind can think much better, memorize much better. But the other step, that's why I often talk about how can you use the mind to heal your brain? Because the mind to me is just an energy. So mm-hmm. just I was saying, the mind gets crystallized, it gets hardened in our energy field. Many people, the normal healthy aura is egg shape, but most people, in most people, it looks like a, a, like a bulb. A lot of energies actually get congested around. That's why we have headaches. Yeah, we get yeah. wrinkles in our faces. We get like the, the wrinkles here between our eyes and such. It's because a lot, a lot of that energy stress is, is very top heavy, the energy. So yeah. actually, like things like yoga even allows you to circulate and move around energy. Already that is already helpful um, uh, in, when it comes to healing the brain, just to kind of like circulate the energy a bit more but then breaking down the crystallized energies and there are energy healing schools that you can go for to really start working on and this is something that I also do for my clients is really to start working on the energy within the chakras itself and breaking that energy down and as you start working there's certain certain exercises that i teach them to start energizing the brain more and more to bring back that fluidity of the brain so now down the road the way i experience my mind it's almost mm-hmm. like you have that light inside your mind, just like you see it in cartoons, yeah. and the light is shining, and the energy is very fluidic. That's why I'm able to uh, do all kinds of mind gymnastics, and it's very, very easy because I'm moving around. My brain is moving that energy around, and I use my will to move that energy around mm-hmm. and to do whatever I wanted to do. And I never feel like, oh, I'm too tired, I'm too fatigued to do this now. The brain yeah. barely, or the mind barely gets fatigued anymore. How can we use our brain more in business? Because a lot of people, when you're starting out in business, as you said, we get brain fog. We go for a lot of different things. But how can we best utilize our brain when building out our business? So first off, our brain is is meant to think faster than it does. Often we bore our brains with slowness. Most of us who are business owners, I'm sure we are in all kinds of programs, learning learning a lot about our businesses. We're spending a lot of time in front of TV screens, listening to so-called experts. Most of us just sit there for hours. It actually is too slow for the brain. The brain gets fatigued, it gets distracted. That's why that's where all this multitasking task, tasking comes in. One another myth that perhaps I would like to debunk here is that many people, those who meditate, they know the benefits, the low, med- low meditation, but there are also plenty of people that just cannot really sit down and practice meditation. But think about it. What is meditation truly? It is prolonged awareness and focus on something. Beat your breath. Beat whatever you do. When we are working on a business, when we are in this flow state, that's already meditation. So when we are listening to experts and replays and whatnot, but we're just sitting in front of a computer. Actually, we're wasting our brain's full potential. Mm-hmm. I highly advise start speeding up things. I trained myself for years to listen to audiobooks at 2x speed or 2.5 now even. I, of course, it, in the beginning, I was just increasing it slightly, getting used to it. Then a few months later, I was increasing it even more because my brain was able to catch up with that. You tr- the faster you play things, the more you force your brain to focus on that one thing. Mm-hmm. Because you know, that golden nugget that you need to learn from this training, you might just miss it. 
it actually forces your brain to no longer be dispersed and doing a million things at the same time. It forces your brain to focus on that one thing. And so start, there are plenty of plugins that you can install on your Google Chrome, which mm -hmm. will appear on every video that you watch. There are also plenty of websites where you can actually drop uh, an audio if there is an audio that you need to listen to and start pacing around, move your body. Everybody knows that when you actually move your body as you're trying to memorize something, you know, the ability to memorize is much better because one part of your brain is busy making sure you don't trip, but there is that other subconscious mind that is able to actually absorb and distill that information and store it deeper. Yeah, I'm aware that what, while not all of us can do it, to use a hundred percent of your brain basically is to do exercise, get more sleep, and where lack of sleep, the brain cannot function or rest. And um, don't steal the time from your social life and have fun. Manage stress well, eat well, and train the brain to to develop those um, things as well. And that's that's how I know using your brain is is a key thing to building out your business. And I've always said that irrespective of whether you're using your brain or not, exercise is always good. Eating well, sleeping well in everyday walks of life um, to, to keep yourself going. And part of that function is your brain. So once your brain is rested, once it's been, once you're going through those, those exercising, eating well and all those things, it is nu nu um, nourishment for your brain. Because I know you, um, neuroscientists, they still can't fully understand the information um, and how we process our brain. So if we, if they can't understand it and they're specialising in that field, we can't then go on to understand it. But at least we have a, a, a level of understanding how we can do it for ourselves and better equip ourselves throughout mm -hmm. our journey in business or our personal lives. So that's another myth that I would like to debunk because when I had my issues, yes, I was eating already healthy food. Mm -hmm. I was already doing exercise and still it didn't prevent my brain from deteriorating. Most people, when they think about brain health, they think about foods and, and memory games and they think about uh, speed reading courses and, and um, all kinds of like computer games and such. Mm -hmm. Still, the smartest people on this planet, scientists, they still get Alzheimer's. Yeah. So there is something else, something more that is happening. That's why, because I could feel energies actually when the energy are out. I've worked with people before who have dementia and Alzheimer's. There's one interesting thing that is happening to them energetically. Just again, kind of like going back to the chakras. Chakras have a certain size and every person has a different chakra size depending on their spiritual development, whatever it is. When you scan the chakras along the body, let's say the chakra size is this, everywhere across the body. But when you actually get to the brain, the chakras around the head, they are much smaller. Mm -hmm. People that have mental deterioration issues, they have smaller chakras, which means their brain has not been properly energized for a long time. It's a deterioration, energetic deterioration of their chakras, mm -hmm. which means that's why when I start looking at my brain health and mind health, I went the energetic route because I didn't have the will to persist with the physical exercise. Many of the brain foods, and there are plenty of supplements and whatnot, they're just way too expensive. I couldn't afford them, mm. right? And then there are the, the, the memory games. My brain was too fried to actually even attempt to memorize more. I was trying and just would give up because it's just too much time and I didn't see, really see the results. Mm -hmm. May, most people on this planet, I'm sure at one point or another, they experimented with one thing or another, but most of them gave, have given up. And that's why scientists cannot find a solution because they're purely right. looking at the brain. Mm -hmm. But actually, when you start looking at yourself and educating yourself more and more energetic, and that's what I stand for, is actually educating people about the brain, brains and minds so that they can think energized. The thoughts have total power to manipulate the energies in our field, you start improving the energies around you, uh, that whatever is in your aura, yeah. the brain will follow because we have a direct influence for the, over the energy that our brain gets to read. Excellent. So what is three points you can leave our listeners and viewers with? So first off, declutter your brain. Start cleaning up your mind. To become more intelligent, it's not more information that you need. What you need is actually an organized mind. So start organizing your mind. And it's mm. not going to make you rigid and organized and pain, you know, to other people. But it's only going to help you to find the right information better in your mind. Mm. 
an organized mind will allow you to actually listen, hear that that voice, that intuitive voice that that is within all of us, no matter whether you are a woman or man, man, it really does not matter. And the third one is really take control of your mornings. Build that in, carve that time out, practice, do something that gives you joy. Mm -hmm. Find back to your roots, to the things that you love doing when you were a child, because you were born amazing. Think about the time when you held the last time a newborn baby in your arms. There's nothing that that baby needs to do. It's perfect, it's amazing, it's beautiful, it's a miracle. And you are still all that. Somebody told you you had to be perfect. And perfect is just a watered down version of being amazing. Somebody told you, be perfect, to become perfect, you need to do something. To do something means you do it and then I'll tell you if you're perfect. You basically gave away the power to somebody else to decide who you are and to define you and your worth. So if you're a busy business owner, to really truly succeed in business, any outward success, it always it's always precipitated by inner work, inner success, by some inner breakthrough. And those inner breakthroughs can only happen if you actually go back to being rather than doing. So many people are busy doing, doing, doing. By doing this, I'm gonna be happy. By doing that, I'm gonna be happy. By marrying that person, I'm gonna get happy. By having those children, buying that house, I'm gonna be happy. That's what fried my brain. All those promises that I needed to do something, but actually all I wanted is just to be happy. Live my full potential, do the things that I enjoy. Mm. You know, manifest my gifts, monetize my gifts somehow. And those of you who are um, busy working on your businesses, I'm sure, the only thing that you truly want is figure out what who you really are. What is the beautiful thing about you that you can contribute to the tapestry of humanity and monetize it. Mm. And to do that, if you feel like lost, if you feel like you don't really know what this business is about, you're not passionate about it, you're just dragging your feet, it's very hard to have success if you're coming from that space. Low energy, nobody's going to feel attracted to you. Growing a business is an energy game too. Sure. Like going back to your roots, carving out that one hour, playing, whatever, doing whatever guilty pleasures, closet things you love to do when you were a child. Find find back to that to that place space. And in that place and space, that beautiful, miraculous, amazing thing that you are can blossom. Love that. So how can our listeners get hold of you and you know learn more about your services? Sure. So you can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, wherever it reads in Alang. But also, um, for those of you who are interested in, in this topic and want to learn more, I actually just finally finished my ebook. And you can get it at reenalang.com slash ebook. Just go there and you will find it and give me your feedback, download it, enjoy it. And there is also a, a little, little mastermind that I did uh, some time ago. And you can also watch a video where I share more insights, more than what I shared uh, here today. And stay in touch, email me as well, whatever. Brilliant. And we're definitely going to be sharing all of uh, Rena and um, but, um, book, free ebook. Thank you for that gift to our, our listeners and viewers. And also all her social media handles. You've been an absolute delight. Thank you very much. It's been an interesting to topic as well. Uh, pleasure having you here. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching or listening. And if you've enjoyed this episode, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Rate, review and download and even share. Thank you for listening to today's show. This week's episode of the Savvy Property Investors Podcast was brought to you by our sponsor, the Savvy Women Group. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's show, head over to our website, www.savvywomen.co.uk to gain access to our free resources and more insights about our guest speaker today. Remember, we make your business our business so you can unlock your full potential and improve your quality of life.